This is Mike Holovac, coach of the Boston Patriots. It's a pleasure for me to be associated with the H.P. Hood and Sons, who have always done so much for our community. As you know, H.P. Hood and Sons has been serving New Englanders since 1846. You'll note their signs everywhere, food for fitness, and it symbolizes the company and its desire to provide the customers with the very best products. It's always a thrill to relive the highlights of a good season, and I think you'll agree that this was an exciting year for the Patriots. You'll see them all in the next few minutes. Jim Nance, winner of the Most Valuable Player Award. Babe Pirelli, making the comeback of the year. Gino Capoletti, winning the scoring championship. And all the players giving their best in the name of the Boston Patriots. I assure you that our players will clearly demonstrate in the many thrilling scenes that are to follow how important it is to keep physically fit and thereby be of greater service to your nation and yourself. I am proud of the Patriots. Now, it is my pleasure to present the narrator of this film and the Patriots play-by-play -play announcer, Bob Starr. The Boston Patriots were one of the American Football League's big surprises in 1966. Coach Mike Holoback's team finished with a better record than most people expected and just missed winning the Eastern Division title. After opening the season with a two-game road trip in San Diego and Denver, the Patriots return home with a one-and-one record to face the powerful Kansas City Chiefs. It's the Patriots' Fenway Park home opener as Justin Canale kicks off for Boston. Chiefs rookie sensation Mike Garrett takes the ball on his own seven and shows the Fenway Park crowd why he's one of the most dangerous runners in the American Football League. Garrett returns the ball 45 yards to the Patriot 48. It doesn't take quarterback Len Dawson long to warm up to the occasion. After moving the Chiefs downfield, Dawson hits Chris Burford with a 31-yard touchdown pass. The Chiefs go ahead 7 to nothing. Boston comes right back as Big Jim Nance follows center John Morris and plows through the Chiefs line for 17 yards. Big Bo is on the go. A pass to Jim Colclaw sets up Nance as he blasts over for the Pats' first score. Boston still trails 17 to 7 early in the second quarter. Ron Hall intercepts to give Boston the ball again. Boston's rapidly improving offensive line shows the kind of protection that will go on to give Pirelli all season long as Babe looks for Jim Whalen. He hits the former Boston College star and the Patriots are in business on the Chiefs too. Once again Pirelli goes to his big fullback for the final yards and Jim Nance responds with tremendous force and six more points. At the half it's Kansas City 17 Boston 14. After the Chiefs strike again the Patriots begin a drive of their own now trailing 23 to 14 Jim Nance picks up nine. Still in the third period Nance smashes for seven more. The other half of the Patriots running attack Larry Guerin is also a fine pass receiver. Guerin scores but Kansas City outlasts Boston 43 to 24 to remain on top with San Diego in the West while our Patriots find themselves near the bottom in the East. After dropping their home opener to the Western Division leaders the Patriots are host to the Eastern Division pace setters the unbeaten New York Jets and quarterback sensation Joe Namath. It's World Series weather as Babe Perilli starts pitching strikes midway through the first quarter. Early throws and Gino Capaletti makes a great grab on the Jets six. The underdog Patriots are threatening. Then the Patriots forward wall opens a big hole and Larry Garen flashes in for the game's first score. After one period it's seven nothing Boston but the Jets score to make it a close 10 seven Boston lead at the end of the half. The defense continues to stymie Joe Namath. Ron Hall kills a drive with an interception in the end zone. Now it's Nance's turn and Big Bo belts the Jets forward wall for seven. The Jets defense doesn't know what to expect as Pirelli goes back to the air. Art Graham makes the grab in Jets territory for another first down. 
Gino Capaletti caps off this drive by making a nice move on Johnny Sample, then catching Babe Pirelli's pass for the score. Boston goes ahead 17 to 7. Joe Namath can't get on track as cornerback Tom Hennessy intercepts his second Namath aerial late in the third quarter. The Patriots are primed for an upset. Larry Guerin then slices through for his second score of the game, and the Patriots are on top 24 to 7. After one more New York touchdown cuts the lead to 24 14, Namath engineers a quick but deadly drive for the visitors. This long pass to Bake Turner is worth 42 yards and a first down on the Patriots 14. Namath throws for the score to rookie Pete Lamons. And the Patriots lead is cut to three. With only 32 seconds remaining and only three points down, the Jets go for the tie, and Jim Turner makes the field goal good. It ends in a 24-24 draw, but Boston becomes the first team to put a blemish on the New Yorkers' unbeaten record. The Patriots, still looking to move up in the Eastern Division standings, visit Buffalo's War Memorial Stadium, where the defending champion Bills provide the opposition. The Patriots' mauling defense and Gino Capaletti's field goal produce a 3-0 Boston lead. Now fullback Ray Carlton runs into more trouble. Bob D recovers the Carlton fumble. Before a record Buffalo crowd of more than 45,000, Jim Nance, Boston's dynamic fullback, leaves tacklers talking to themselves. He rips through and scores as Boston takes charge 10 to nothing. Capaletti adds a field goal later, and Boston leads by 13. Buffalo's frustrations reach a peak when Kemp, going back to pass in the second quarter, falls over an official. It was just one of those nights as the Patriots held on to their 13-0 advantage. In the second half, after Buffalo scores its first three points on a field goal, Joe Bellino leaves a lasting impression on the Bills. He breaks outside for a dandy 43-yard kickoff return. The former Heisman and Maxwell Trophy winner is a welcomed addition to the Patriots' attack. Bellino climaxes his comeback to the Patriots with this great catch for his first pro touchdown. Led by Pirelli's passes, Bellino's catch, Big Bo's running, and an outstanding defense, the Patriots upset the defending champs 20 to 10 and move ahead of Buffalo to take over second place in the Eastern Division standing. The next game finds San Diego at Boston. The Chargers beat the Patriots on the West Coast, but the Pats have come a long way since then. The Chargers strike like lightning as quarterback John Hadle crosses up the Patriots' hard-charging defense with this screen pass to Lance Allworth. The biggest Boston crowd since 1964 watches as the all-league flanker goes all the way on a 42-yard scoring play. And after one period, the Chargers lead 7 to nothing. But Boston has some of the same as Larry Guerin loses himself in traffic, then gets behind a San Diego linebacker and Pirelli connects. Guerin moves right out for 53 yards and the game is tied 7-7. The next time the Patriots get the ball, Babe Pirelli engineers another drive goalward. His pass to Jim Whalen nets 25 yards and gives Boston a first down deep in Charger territory. On third and nine, the Babe uses his fullback, Jim Nance, as a pass receiver. Nance gains 10. Pirelli polishes off this drive with a pass to Gino Cavalletti for the go-ahead touchdown. Besides being the league's outstanding place kicker, Gino is a talented receiver as well. After Tom Addison dumps Paul Lowe for a loss, Ron Hall makes a key interception of this Hadle to Keith Lincoln pass. Hall falls short of the end zone, but Boston is in great field position. Larry Guerin follows number 76, Charlie Long, into the end zone, and the Patriots are again in the driver's seat, leading 21-17 after three periods. The blocking up front has been great, and Babe Pirelli loves every second of it. He has plenty of time to connect with Larry Guerin, and Larry does the rest. The high-stepping halfback goes another 53 yards for his third touchdown of the game. They say a hard-charging line is the best pass defense. Here's a perfect example of what happens when John Hadle doesn't have time to set up. All-pro Nick Bonacotti grabs off this hurried pass and makes like a fullback for 41 yards. The interception gives Boston a chance to wrap up the ball game. Jim Nance plows in for the touchdown, and the Patriots are in the lead, 35 to 17. 
Late in the fourth quarter, Boston quarterback John Hewitt is given a chance at the control. His pass, intended for J.D. Garrett, winds up in the arms of a talented spectator. And away he goes. It climaxes a wild afternoon of football as the Patriots gain sweet revenge with a 35-17 decision and move to within one half game of first place. Following their big win over San Diego, the surprising Patriots take on the red-hot Oakland Raiders at Boston. The Raiders upset the Jets the previous week, so today's two teams have the best winning streaks going in the AFL. Late in the first quarter, with the Patriots leading 7-0, Larry Gowan explodes around the left side. He gallops to the Oakland 24 before Warren Powers can knock him out of bounds. It's a 54-yard run, and Boston is fired up. A fake to Nance. A pass to Gino Capaletti. And another Boston touchdown. Let's take another look at Capaletti as he runs his pass pattern. Gino has been the league's top scorer for the past three seasons and is on his way to making it four in a row. We stop the action at the crucial point where Capaletti is forced to change direction for the difficult catch. The Patriots lead 14 to nothing after one quarter. But in the second quarter, Oakland cuts the Boston lead in half as Cotton Davidson throws to Clem Daniels. And the big Raider halfback takes it all the way for the score. Patriots coach Mike Hollaback doesn't want to see this game get away. Still in the second quarter, Boston's Jim Nance shows why he's the league's leading rusher. Once again, our slow motion camera reveals the strength and determination of the former Syracuse star as Nance moves to these 54 big yards. Word is received in the press box that Buffalo and New York are scoreless at the half. Should the Jets lose and Boston win, the Patriots will take over first place in the East. Nance comes right back with another big gain up the middle. After Boston scores on a field goal, Nance adds to his great day's work. Jim's second touchdown of the afternoon gives the Patriots a 17-point lead in the third quarter. The Raiders counter with two scores and look for more late in the game, but Chuck Chata is the hero as he wipes out the threat with a big interception. Jim Nance, with 208 yards on the ground, breaks four team and league records. Down in New York, the Bills beat the Jets. Boston, with its 24-21 victory over Oakland, now takes over first place in the East. Rain and plenty of it hits Fenway Park as the league-leading Patriots play host to the Denver Broncos. Early in the second half, with the Patriots in front 7-3, the Broncos rookie quarterback Max Shaboyan passes complete to Darrell Lester in the end zone. Denver stuns the pass by going ahead 10-7. A 33-yard Capaletti field goal ties it up. Then the Patriots start a last-ditch drive on this Pirelli pass to Larry Garrett. Rain becomes the great equalizer, and the highly explosive Patriots ground game is having problems. Larry Garrett has plenty of blocking in front of him, but can't escape being caught from behind. Only 20 seconds are left in the game as the Patriots try for a winning field goal. It just misses, and Denver has one last chance to win it. Eight seconds remain as Max Shaboyan blocks a long pass downfield. Chuck Shanta almost intercepts, but the muddy ball bounces up in the air, and Al Denson is there to grab it on the run. Denson goes all the way as Denver upsets Boston 17 to 10. The loss drops the Patriots into a tie for second place with the Jets as Buffalo goes to the head of the class in the East. The Patriots, now trailing first place Buffalo and tied with the Jets for second, finish out a four-game homestand against the Houston Oilers. Gino Capaletti, the versatile pass catcher place kicker of the Patriots, is after his fourth consecutive scoring title. And a big day by him could spell the difference between victory and defeat. Quarterback Babe Perilli comes up with a clutch pass play in the first quarter to Jim Whalen going away. Whalen scores his first touchdown as a Patriot and throws the football into the land of no return. 
Don Cruel teams up with Larry Elkins later in the period. The two former Baylor All-Americans have been doing this sort of thing since their college days when they were the nation's top pass-catch combination. The Cruel to Elkins combination works again. Only this time it's for a touchdown and after one period the score is deadlocked at 7-7. Seven, seven. The Oilers go ahead 14 to 10, but Boston bounces right back as Babe Perilli puts one on the line to Gino Capaletti. Well, distances Bernie Parrish to the goal line. The 63-yard play gives the lead back to the Patriots. At the half, it's Patriots 20, Oilers 14. Babe Perilli brings the fans to their feet in the third period as he throws a scoring strike to Gino Capaletti. It's Gino's second of the game, and Boston is in command 27 to 14. But the Oilers refuse to quit. Quarterback Don Truel steps into the pocket. And let's fly with a long one to Charlie Fraser. He carries it all the way. It's a 53-yard touchdown play as Houston moves to within six points. With time running out, Don Truel scrambles before finally throwing for a go for broke pass to Old Burrell. Tommy Hennessy makes a great defensive effort, and Boston wins it 27 to 21. Dino Capaletti has his biggest day, scoring 21 points, and the Patriots are back in contention. The Patriots hit the road, ready for their showdown battle with the Kansas City Chiefs. A record-breaking crowd is on hand as the Patriots are introduced. All-star offensive tackle Tom Neville. And end Art Graham lead Boston's offensive team on the field as the AFL's top game of the week begins. The Patriots trail 3-0 as a result of the Kansas City field goal late in the first quarter. Now Tom Music attempts to punt for Boston. Number 25, Frank Pitt storms through to block the punt. It's a crucial play, and Kansas City has a 10-0 lead after one quarter. The Patriots all-pro blitzer Nick Bonacanti is a little over-anxious to get at the action. It looks like a little boy caught with his hand in the cookie jar when the official throws the flag. Boston becomes even more determined on the next play as Jim Hunt and Houston Antwine manhandle Dawson for minus yardage. There's a fumble, and Bob D. recovers for the Patriots. Chiefs head coach Hank Stram paces on the sidelines as the Patriots try to make this break pay off. With the Patriots trailing 10-7, Jim Nance makes good use of blocks by Charlie Long and John Morris to pick up 13 yards. Our end zone camera sees the Patriots' offensive formation just as the Chiefs do on defense. Art Graham speeds by the Kansas City secondary to make one of his 11 pass receptions of the day. It's his second touchdown of the game and one that deserves a second look. Let's watch Graham as he races downfield to make the touchdown catch and give the Patriots a 14 to 10 lead. Boston is ahead 17 to 13 when flanker Otis Taylor of the Chiefs makes a spectacular one handed grab for a score in the third quarter. The Chiefs are back on top 20 to 17. It's now 27-24 Kansas City as quarterback Len Dawson aims for Chris Burford with less than three minutes to go. But Nick Bonacanti gets the ball for Boston. Time is running out, so Babe Pirelli uses sideline passes in order to stop the clock. Jim Whalen hangs on to this 25-yarder, and Boston is on the Kansas City 32. Jim Nance helps this best Boston drive of the season along with a smash up the middle. The seconds are ticking away as Pirelli goes to Art Graham, needing six yards for a first down. Graham comes up one yard short, one of the key plays of the season. Now watch closely as we use our super slow motion technique to illustrate the importance of this play. If Graham can fall forward, he has a first down. But he's thrown back, and Boston is forced into a fourth and one situation. With less than 30 seconds left to play, Gino Capaletti is called on to try a 13-yard field goal. 
It's good through the uprights to give Boston a 27-27 tie with the Kansas City Chiefs, and the Pats title hopes are still alive. It's on to beautiful Florida, where the Patriots play the Miami Dolphins in the Orange Bowl. The daylight fades almost as fast as Babe Pirelli does on this pass play. Babe has ample time to find Gino Capaletti for 57 yards midway through the second period. Pirelli keeps the Patriots in the title race with this 22-yard payoff pass to Art Graham. Watch Graham's left foot as Dick Westmoreland is left holding the shoe. Is that any way to run a pass pattern? You bet it is. It's 7-0 Patriots in the second quarter. Nearing the end of the first half, Perilli again measures the Miami pass defense with this strike to number 81, Jim Coldclaw. Good for 25 yards. Now the pitch out goes to Jim Nance. He turns the corner behind the Boston strong boy Len St. Jean. And the Patriots advance 27 yards closer to the goal line. The Miami defense stiffens, so Gino Capaletti booms one between the uprights from 32 yards out. Flipper, Miami's pet dolphin, has himself a ball, while the Patriots have themselves a 10-0 lead at intermission. Flipper knows leather isn't as good as fish, so he returns the pigskin in order to collect a tasty snack. Second half action resumes in the Orange Bowl, and Nick Bonacotti intercepts Dick Wood's hurried throw after a fine pass rush from all leaguers Larry Eisenhower and Houston Antwine. Dolphin linebacker Wahoo McDaniel jumps the gun, but gets back in time. Jim Nance still hits that left side for 23 yards. Later, Gino Capaletti tries for his longest field goal of the season. The ball sails true and through for a booming 49-yard score, and Boston leads 13 to nothing in the third period. Later in the quarter, Len St. Jean and center John Morris open up a big hole for Jim Nance. The league super fullback goes non-stop as Boston takes charge 20 to nothing. The Dolphins counter with one touchdown and look for another. Quarterback Dick Wood throws to Carl Noonan. Who in turn flips to Joe Auer. And Auer goes the rest of the way on this exciting 38-yard razzle-dazzle play. However, the Dolphins fall one touchdown shy as Jim Nance becomes the new AFL single season ground gaining king and the Patriots win 20 to 14. The largest crowd ever to see the Patriots play in Boston jams Fenway Park for the first place war between the Patriots and the Bills. Buffalo's Jackie Kemp gives the Bills their initial scoring opportunity in the first quarter on a 48 yard pass play to Bobby Burnett. Chuck Shotta makes a crucial tackle on the eight, preventing Burnett from going all the way. The Patriots defense does its job for three downs, forcing the Bills to go for the field goal. Booth Lustig toes the mark and boots an 11-yard field goal. Buffalo draws first blood and goes ahead three to nothing. The Patriots' chance comes on the next series of downs. On third and two, Don Oaks, number 71, comes across with a fine block that springs Jim Nance loose. After Big Bo almost takes off Mike Stratton's arm, he leaves two other defenders in the dust, while Art Graham takes care of George Sainz. Nance goes all the way for 65 yards and the first touchdown of the game. It stays 7-3 going into the third period. Babe Pirelli fakes the Nats, then uncorks a 37-yard completion to Art Graham. And Boston is knocking on the door at the Bills' 25. Pirelli follows up with a 20-yard toss to Joe Bellino in the corner. And the former Navy great comes up with a strong second effort to grab the pass. Babe 
drive rolls out on this play. And with St. Jean and Nance leading the way, Pirelli makes it in. The Patriots lead 14 to 3 going into the final period. Now Boston's league leading defense goes to work. Here's Jim Hunt and Houston Antwine burying quarterback Darrell LaMonica for a 22 yard deficit, and Hunt comes up with the football. The Boston defense, led by Nick Bonacanti, is playing perhaps its greatest game. The visiting Bills have yet to beat Boston this season, and they have even less success in this game than they did at Buffalo, where the Patriots won 20 to 10. The Pats are now back on top with only two more games to go. The happy Boston fans charge the field with some of that good old championship fever. The goalposts go down, and the score goes up. It's a bruising display of defensive football as the Patriots win it 14 to 3. Now it's off to Texas and the Houston Oilers as United Airlines, which flies eight of the nine AFL teams during the season, welcomes the Patriots aboard. The Patriots, after a fine homestand, realize the Eastern crown is within their grasp. A win over the Oilers, followed by a win or a tie in New York against the Jets, will give the surprising Patriots the division title. All-league tackle Houston Antwine and co-captain Charlie Long have played important roles in the team's success. They relax, along with the rest of the Patriots, who have only one thought in mind, beat Houston. In Texas, there's plenty of pageantry and color as the fans await the arrival of the first-place Boston pros. But with injured defensive stars Tommy Addison and Jay Cunningham out for the rest of the season, the Patriots know they have their work cut out. But for one of the few times all season, the Patriots were favored, as they are hailed as the Cinderella team of pro football. After Houston takes a brief 7-0 lead, the Patriots get down to business. Larry Guerin is shown getting a step on Houston rookie defensive back P.O. Viltz and taking Babe Pirelli's pass 61 yards for the score. The Patriots go ahead 17-7 late in the second quarter. The Kentucky Babe continues to riddle the Oilers' pass defense. Art Graham grabs this one for 16 yards, and Boston is moving like a well-oiled machine. Pirelli stays with the aerial show as he throws to Jimmy Whalen, who doesn't stop running until he's in the end zone. The Patriots have a resounding 24-7 lead at halftime. Pirelli's three touchdown passes in the second quarter should be enough, but Boston continues to apply the pressure as we pick up the second half action. Jim Nance opens the third quarter with another big play. The AFL's new superstar behind Lynn St. Jean and Don Oaks goes for 57 yards on Boston's fourth touchdown. The Patriots enjoy their biggest explosion of the season and now call on their youth corps. Nobody disappoints as rookie fullback Bob Capadonna follows his blocking around the left side for 13 yards. Two Heisman Award winners, John Hewitt and Joe Bellino, hook up for a 15-yard completion. With Carl Singer and Justin Canale now in the front wall, Hewitt looks for his play. The former Notre Dame star decides to run and picks up another first down. Boston fans see visions of a strong baby bull backfield as Capadonna shows a little of the Nance style and blasts through for the TD. The Patriots win big, 38 to 14, and now are only one game away from an Eastern Division championship. In the beginning, most of the experts said they couldn't do it. But now, in a showdown at New York's Shea Stadium, the Patriots face the always tough New York Jets with a chance to win the Eastern crown. With a title game and Super Bowl waiting beyond, the Pats need only a win or a tie today to make it. Field General Babe Perilli was chosen as the comeback player of the year for his 1966 performance. And the fabulous Mr. Nance, the most powerful force to ever hit the AFL. The Patriots have great respect for Joe Namath and his golden arm as he continues to improve with experience and demonstrate qualities of start. Babe Pirelli has the Boston offense rolling full steam ahead as he opens the scoring with a bomb that lands in the waiting arms of Gino Cavalletti, 
the league's leading scorer. Boston is aware of the explosive aerial game of the Jets, but Namath crosses up the Boston defense by establishing a strong running attack. Rookie Emerson Boozer moves like an express on this 54-yard gallop before Houston Antwine and Lonnie Farmer can bring him down. Now the time is right. Joe Namath pitches to Don Maynard for the score. It up and eventually move further ahead to lead 17 to 7 at intermission. While the Jets continue to dominate play, Mike Hollaback outlines offensive strategy with Art Graham and Babe Perilli. However, in the second half, the Jets continue to exploit any defensive weakness they can find. Joe Namath again passes to Don Maynard for a touchdown, and New York boosts its lead to 24 to 7. But the Patriots still try to come back as Babe Perilli uncorks a long pass to Larry Garrett. It gives Boston a first down on the Jets' 18. Joe Bellino is split wide, and Jimmy Whalen is in tight as Babe Perilli goes for the payoff. His pass is in Whalen's direction, and Jim has it for the Patriots' second touchdown. Boston fans keep the faith as Jim Nance breaks loose for a first down in the fourth quarter. Babe Pirelli has no choice but to keep pitching in the final period, with the Patriots trailing 31 to 13. Dino Cavaletti brings the Patriots 18 yards closer. The drive continues to the one where Jim Nance barrels in for the score. The two-point conversion from Pirelli to Capadonna brings the Patriots to within 10. They trail 31-21. Here comes a play that really hurts. The Jets' Matt Snell takes off like there's no tomorrow and goes all the way for the touchdown. The Patriots counter with one more, but it's too late. And in their best performance of the season, the Jets knock the Patriots out of the race. However, Coach Mike Holovac, his staff, and team have much to be proud of. They made believers out of those who doubted and established themselves as one of the outstanding teams of professional football. And now, the Patriots, supported by their best material ever, look ahead with high hopes that in 1967, they will be the champions who wear the crown.